Hello, hello, hello. We are here tonight. I am Bishop Van Sharp. I'm the pastor and founder of Newness of Life Christian Center, one of the greatest churches in all the world. And I know you feel that way about the local assembly and the part of the ministry that you are serving. I am so grateful to be able to come to you tonight. That's right. It is almost the end of 2020 going into the year of 2021. I know you are ready to celebrate. Amen. Of course, I'm here where I should be, and I hope you are inside of your home, ready to celebrate and bring in the new year. Amen. Through texting, through calling, through doing whatever is necessary to make those connections. I hope and pray that you are not out in some big, big social social gathering without your mask, without practicing social distances and without washing your hands. We know as our governor, amen, and uh, the doctor called it the three W's. And I am here and I am grateful that God is indeed having his way and he's ruling and reigning. One thing about it, Jesus Christ is Lord and we speak it, we proclaim it, we confess it and we boldly declare it. Again, I want you to get on that phone tonight. I want you to text somebody, call somebody, email somebody. Let them know we are getting ready to speak a word of life to them. And so you don't want to just hear the word yourself again you're reaching out to others that others might hear the word of the Lord. And I'm going to tell you something. We count it a privilege to be able to bring these particular messages to you on Facebook Live each and every Tuesday night at 730 and each and every Thursday at seven o'clock and each and every Sunday morning at 1015. Let me say something to you. You don't want to miss our 1015 service this upcoming Sunday morning. I mean, God has given me a prophetic word that I know is necessary for the year 2021. Now, tonight, we're going to give you some things that are going to help you come out of the old 2020 and move into the year of 2021. We're going to be talking to you tonight off a powerful message entitled Forging Ahead. Now, we're going to be talking to you about that in a few minutes. But right now, I want you to get on the phone. I want you to text somebody, call somebody, email somebody, do whatever you have to to make sure that you are not alone in hearing the word of God. I want you to love up on somebody and say, hey, I love you enough to tell you. To watch Facebook Live, there's a man, Bishop Van Sharp, who has a word in his mouth that's going to bless us. So I want you to, again, get on the phone, text somebody, call somebody, email somebody. I want those of you that watch us here on Facebook Live, I want you to hit that share button, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let's make connections tonight that will indeed bring us out of 2020 into 2021. Now we've been declaring all year 2020 as our more season. And man, did we really see a manifestation of that, that God wanted us to see more spiritually and be more spiritually and experience more naturally. And I'm telling you, God has done it according to his word, Psalms 115 verses 14 and 15 that declares the Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. And again, we've authored several books and our latest two books we've written that I'll be talking to you about at the end of the program. One is entitled Death, A Need to Understand, and the other one, Long Distance Runner. We'll be talking to you about them more at the end of the program. And again, we want you to make that connection, hit that share button, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You see right here, happy 2021. That's right. Happy 2020. Oh, yeah, that's what I got here. Yeah. Can you see it? Amen. That's right. I hope you can see it. All right. Yeah. 
Amen. And of course, green. And this one is purple. Amen. Happy 2021. Amen. And again, we are excited about what God's going to do. And we're ready to sound the alarm and rejoice and have a great time tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we're not going to be up here with you to 12 o'clock tonight, but we are going to give you some things that the Holy Spirit has given us to give you as we are coming out of 2020 going into 2021. And again, on Sunday morning at 1015, my God, you're talking about some prophetic words that God has given us. It's going to be powerful. Amen. This Sunday morning at 1015. You don't want to miss that. Let's pray real quickly. Father, I thank you for the message tonight that you will ordain that we hear. We open our hearts. We open our minds. We open our spirits to the word of the Lord. We thank you so much that you will think through my mind, speak through my lips, an uh, exciting and empowering word in Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. All right. Those of you that have your Bibles, we're going to go into the word of God and we're going to look in the book of Philippians. We're going to Philippians chapter three and we're going to read uh, verses 12 through 16. And I'm going to read them to you in the uh, Passion Translation and the Message Bible. Many of you know what it says in the King James Version, how that Paul spoke of the fact that that I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of Christ Jesus and in Christ Jesus. And he talked about how he forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Now, let me read it to you. Philippians three verses 12 through 16 in the Passion Translation. Again, we want you to get it and get this word. Text somebody, call somebody, hit that share button. That's right. Hit. All right. Do all of that in the name of the Lord as we're talking to you tonight about forging ahead. We're talking to you tonight about forging ahead. Many of you have gone through many things and some of the things you've gone through this past year haven't been pleasant. But the good news is that God never expects you to allow anything that you have gone through or anything that you will go through to stop you from forging ahead, to stop you from moving ahead, to stop you from making progress or stop you from making, amen, new steps, amen, forward in the kingdom. So we're talking about forging ahead. Now listen at what Paul, the apostle said, and I'm reading again, Philippians 3, verses 12 through 16 in the Passion Translation. It says, I admit, that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance. Notice what we do. We run with passion into his abundance. Remember, God always has abundance on his mind for you and I. Don't let no religious person begin to speak ugly concerning the message of prosperity or the message of the kingdom. Remember, Jesus said, I am come that you might have life, Zoe, and have it more abundantly. That eternal life, that God kind of life, it deals with everything that relates to life and godliness. Anything that pertains to having a prosperous journey, a journey that advances us, a journey that helps us fulfill his purpose in the earth. Because we know the Bible said all things work together for good to them that love God and are the call according to his purpose. So God called us with his purpose in mind. And he's never going to come up short on supplying us with what we need to fulfill his purpose. Abundance is a part of the plan of God for our lives because God knows that it takes abundance in order to fulfill the purpose of God. Remember, even when Jesus was born in a manger, when Jesus was born there, the wise men came. 
They brought gifts. They brought gold. They brought frankincense. They brought myrrh. Amen. So what was that necessary for? For Jesus to have available to him to fulfill the assignment over his life. Jesus did not want for anything. And so we run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose that Jesus Christ has called me to fulfill and wants me to discover. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. One thing that 2020 has taught us or should have taught us is not to depend on our own strength. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Our strength is in the name of the Lord. Our peace is in the name of the Lord. Our joy is in the name of the Lord. Everything that we need and want is in him. In him we move. In him we live. And in him we have our being. We don't depend on our own strength. We know that the Lord is our light and our salvation and his grace is sufficient for us. Some of you have gone through losing your loved one, losing a mother or losing a brother or losing a sister or losing a wife. It takes understanding that God's grace is sufficient and his strength is made perfect in your weakness. God is going to give you enough strength to forge ahead. Listen at what it says. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. So Paul was one who was of the tribe of Benjamin, circumcised on the eighth day, a Pharisee of Pharisee. But he had to count all of those things that were gained to him. He had to count them but dung for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. He had to forget all of that. He had to push aside all his Pharisee background. He had to put aside all of the fact that he was raised at the feet of Gamaliel, that he was one who was a strict learner and teacher of the law. He had to push that aside and count that as dung for the knowledge and the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Listen at what he said. He said, I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. Now we have to understand that it's about the future. Y'all know at Newness of Life Christian Center, NOLCC, shout out to you every member. You know what we teach. The devil is never fighting you about your past. He's not fighting you about your future. I mean, about your present. He's fighting you about your future. Now, he will use something from your past or use something in your present to make you think you can't go any further. But the devil is a liar. He is a defeated foe. God has something brand new that he's about to do in your life. Just like I have on this brand new shirt that my sister, shout out to Pastor Susan Sharp, that she blessed me with for Christmas. I believe that God has some new things in store for us as we move out of 2020 into 2021. Now listen at what he says. He said, I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. So let all who are fully mature have the same passion. And if anyone is not yet gripped by these desires, God will reveal it to them. And let us all advance together to reach this victory prize following one path with one passion. Hallelujah. See, we know the ultimate goal is to get our eternal reward. We know that they that are in the natural, they put forth their best effort. They stay focused to get a natural trophy, to get a natural prize, to get a natural reward. But you and I are putting forth our focus and we are moving forward 
with one passion, one drive, one desire, and that is to lay hold of our eternal trophy, the eternal prize. And so you and I have to forge ahead. So we're talking about forging ahead. Listen at this in the message translation. All right. Philippians three verses 12 and through 16 in the message translation. All right. It says, I'm not saying that I have this all together, that I haven't made. See, Paul, an apostle, one who raised the dead, one who cast out devils, one who saw the supernatural moving in his life, still never counted himself to have it all made. He said, but I am well on my way, reaching out for Christ, reaching out for the anointing and the anointed one who has so wondrously reached out for me. See, God reached out for you so you could reach out for him. The Bible said we love him because he what? First loved us. He said, friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this, but I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward. See, God is saying, hey, come on, come on, come on. I know some things may have hurt you in 2020, but it's going to be all right. Come on, come on forward into your future. Come on forward into 2021. Come on forward. That's right. Let go of that. Let go of whatever successes you had, whatever victories you had in 2020 and know that I got some more still in store for you. I still got more for you. You haven't seen your best days. You haven't seen your best years. So come on. I'm beckoning you into your future. You know, like those lepers, those lepers said, why sit we here and die? And they move forward. And when they move forward, God stood with them and gave them a supernatural victory. Well, he wants to give you and I a supernatural victory. See, you have trials that are sent from the adversary. But remember, God has victory and triumph for you. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph. So you're looking forward to your triumphant victory. And it's never going to be a natural thing. It's always going to be a supernatural thing that God does in your life. You can do the natural, but he does the supernatural. Listen, it says, uh, but I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm off and running. That's why we wrote the book, Running to Receive the Prize. I'll show it to you at the end. And I'm not turning back. Oh, my God. We don't, we don't need people now turning back. We don't need people talking about, well, it's hard, it's rough, and I'm looking back. Well, no, no. So let's keep focus on that goal. You know what a goal is. That's something in front of you, something ahead of you, something you haven't done yet, something you haven't been yet, something you haven't accomplished yet. Those of us who want everything God has for us. Am I talking to anybody tonight? That you want everything that God has for you. You remember that song that was out years ago, what God has for me, it is for me. Do you really want what God has for you? Well, you won't get it looking back. In fact, if you look back, the Bible says you're not fit for the kingdom. We want you to take victories that you had in your past and let them propel you into your future. Let them excite you and ignite you and fire you up about your future. David defeated a bear. David defeated a lion. And he used that, the testimonies of that, to bring him into an understanding that he could defeat Goliath. All right? It says, if any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment. That's a powerful word, two words. I'll come back later. God will clear your blurred vision. And I'm telling you, 2020 should be a year where you should be clear about how much you need the word, how much you need the Lord, how much you need men and women of God in your life 
speaking truth to you, inviting you to greet greater realms of glory and splendor and honor because God is always wanting you to know that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former house. He wants you to know that better is the end of a thing than the beginning. He wants you to know that though your beginning is small, your latter end shall greatly increase. Shout out to Jackie, uh, uh, evangelist Jackie Bellamy and brother Vincent Bellamy and Wanda Brown and your watch party. Shout out to y'all tonight. Amen. Shout out to Ernie Williams, brother Ernie, uh, Minister Danny, Donna Davis, Mother Whitaker. All right now. Bishop Ronald Wayne Sharp, we're forging ahead, man. We're forging ahead. Uh, Patricia Burton, Melinda Burt, shout out to you, Patricia Burton and Charles Burton. Uh, Ricky Pindler is watching. All right, all of these great people are watching tonight. Uh huh, yes, yes. Teresa Johnson, shout out to you and your watch party. Uh, Melody Hatchell, Brother Wade. All right now, Catherine Mason. All right now. Shout out to Linda Brinson. We're praying for you, woman of God. Amen. After losing your brother, you got us. Amen. And we got you in prayer. You indeed have us praying sincerely for you, as well as Sister Patricia Body lost her mother. Amen. On yesterday, Miss Lena Body. Amen. Knew that great woman. Amen. We had some great times with them in the project. I grew up in the projects, apartment 81 East Side Home. I think they were in. Uh, uh, apartment 70 something and we had some great time with all of her children amen Patricia amen uh, Melvin body uh, Billy body Carlton body Vincent body all of those great people all right all right shout out to Elder Marvin White and Sister Iris love you guys board members shout out to Sister Demetrius all right Marcus Johnson shout out to Yolanda Renee our uh, Iris Frit, uh, Finch, mm -hmm. good to know you're watching. Uh, Rachel Moses, Brianna Moses, Shante Moses, and Lorenzo Moses. All the Moses family. Mm -hmm. ah! <laughs> All right. It said, God will clear your blurred vision. You will see it yet. Now that we're on the right track, let's stay on it. We're on the right track, let's stay on it. Now, let's deal with the word forge. The word forge means to move ahead with increased speed and effectiveness. Now, as we're coming out of 2020, moving into 2021, God wants you to forge ahead. Forge ahead. Satan sent a lot of stuff to try to stop you in 2020. Sent a lot of stuff to try to mess with your head in 2020. But again, in 2020, I told you it is and it was it is our more season it's our more season and we're still in that season of more and don't you dare again miss sunday's message god has a word that we're going to really get into what 2021 holds but right now i'm trying to get you stirred up about forging ahead all right it means to move ahead with increased speed see this year we want you to move ahead not slow, but faster than you ever moved. God wants you to forge ahead with increased speed and effectiveness. Listen to what forge means. To move ahead with increased speed and effectiveness. It means to form by heating and hammering. So something is formed or forged by hammering it or heating it. And some of you been through some fire in 2020. And all it has done is make you more determined. It has made you more, amen, ready and willing to go forward. The devil thought what he was throwing at you was going to make you look back, turn back, walk back. But you are determined to forge ahead. Come on, write that down there at the bottom of your screen. Say, I'm forging ahead. In spite of what has seemed difficult, in spite of the trials, in spite of the tests, in spite of what's been thrown at me, I am forging ahead. Yes, somebody may have died, but I'm forging ahead. Yes, it may look like 
Amen. Some things weren't going my way, but I'm forging ahead. Listen, this word forge means to beat into shape. Glory to God. Hallelujah. To form or make, to beat into shape, to form or make, especially by concentrated effort. See, we told you two words are always going to be important to the body of Christ. One is intentional and the other is influence. We are going to intentional influence the world around us. We're going to intentional make a difference. Listen, when you forge ahead, you continue with it and you make progress with it. What I say? When you forge ahead, you continue with it and you make progress with it. Whatever things were thrown at you, you are continuing and you're forging ahead and you're going to make progress. Look how much was thrown at Jesus. Look how much was thrown at Paul. And look how much has been thrown at you and you are forging ahead. We must see forging ahead. Get this statement. We must see forging ahead as our only option. That's a word that God gave me to give to somebody tonight. You must see that forging ahead is your only option. You have no other alternative. There is no other way out except forging ahead. I'm going ahead anyway. I'm going on in the name of the Lord. You all remember that by the commission. I'm going on in the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we have victory. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a great song by the commission going way back. Shout out to Ladorius Leonard. All right. My cousin, I believe, Cynthia Sharp. Amen. Good to know you're watching. Monica Glover. All right. And Sister Vernita and Dennis Battle. Good to know you're watching. We love you, Sister Vernita. All right. And your lovely daughters. Shout out to Deacon Bobby Gaston and Vanessa Gaston, as well as Mike Montana. All right. We must see forging ahead as our only option. Psalm 34 and 5. Psalm 34 and 5 in the Passion Translation. It says, gaze upon him, talking about the Lord, join your life with his and joy will come. Your faces will glisten with glory. You will never wear that shame face again. You see, when you forge your head and you focus on Jesus, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith, your face will glisten. And God will never let you be ashamed. God will never let you be embarrassed. God will always bring you out and confound the enemy. The devil thought he had you. He threw it at you saying, oh, this is going to make her quit. Oh, this is going to make her walk away from God. And then all of a sudden, instead of walking away from God, instead of quitting, you go forward and you grow and you develop. Now he's puzzled because he did all of that and still didn't stop you. Shout out to Sean Forte, as well as William Bynum and Kathy Mellon. Way to go, Kathy. Good to know you're watching. All right. Matthew 6 and 21 in the Passion Translation. It says, for your heart will always pursue what you value as your treasure. What your heart will always pursue what you value as your treasure. In other words, where your treasure is, there will your heart be. And Paul, I mean, you know, the, the writer here, Matthew, is talking about money, but it deals with anything else. If you value Jesus, you're going to pursue Jesus. If you love the Lord, you're going to pursue the Lord. Shout out the prophetess Mary Fleming on tonight. All right. It's been said that bravery is not the absence of fear, but the forging ahead despite being afraid. Fear time when... Amen. Things may try to bring you to a place of being fearful, but in spite of what you feel outside, you don't let fear get inside because you are determined to forge ahead. Shout out to Cynthia McLean. All right. Clint Eastwood. Y'all heard of Clint Eastwood? Go ahead. Make my day. Y'all know Clint Eastwood. 
He said, I don't believe in pessimism. I don't either, Clint. I don't believe in being pessimistic. If something doesn't come up the way you want, forge ahead. Y'all see that? I don't believe in pessimism. If something doesn't come up the way you want it to or the way you want, forge ahead. In other words, he's saying no matter what, we ought to forge ahead. That's what God is saying right now to the church. That's what God is saying right now as we close out 2020, going into 21, God's saying, go ahead, go forward with an accelerated pace. Go forward with much more speed and go forward with much more effectiveness. I'm going to take you forward with a greater acceleration. I'm going to accelerate things around you. I'm going to accelerate your blessing. I'm going to accelerate your life. And I'm, you're going to be more effective, more effective in 2021 than you were in 2020. Glory to God. Let me read Hebrews 12, 1, 2, and 3. It says this. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Notice where the race is in front of us. The future. Glory. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him. There's something in 2021 that God got for us or else we would have died out in 2020. Hallelujah. But the mere fact that he's bringing us through 2020 into 2021, there's something fresh, something powerful. As I said, I said this way, something big, something bold and something beautiful about to happen in our lives. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be weary and faint in your mind. So we ought to look at Jesus so we won't quit, so we won't throw in the towel, but so we will forge ahead, press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. Again, shout out to Alvin Whitaker, as well as a shout out to Patricia Body. Again, Sister Patricia, we love you and we're praying for you during this time of loss. All right. Amen. That's the question. Is the church personality driven or institutional driven? I say this. It is built on the person. The church is built on the person of Jesus Christ, not on you and I. They used to call preachers poverty pimp because preachers were so poor, didn't have anything. And now they call preachers prosperity preachers. See, in other words, all of that kind of stuff is said to try to stop the church. But the church cannot be stopped. You know why? Because the church is not personality driven. It's not built on anyone except the rock, Jesus Christ, the revelation of Jesus Christ. And Jesus has said that the gates of hell shall not prevail against his church. It is God's church, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. So even in the midst of the pandemic, even in the midst of what they say is economic bad time, which we say again is our season of more, it's your more season, sir. Shout out to Pastor Anthony Flowers, Pastor Flowers, amen. A great man of God. So good to, to hear from you, man of God. Love you, man. Hallelujah. I must have been texting the wrong number because I didn't never got no text back. If this Pastor Anthony Fowler was out of Kinston, we, we love you, man. God bless you. And forge ahead. Forge ahead. Amen. Shout out to Trina Jones and June Hinton. All right. Okay. Listen, Robert Robin Sharma said, this Robin Sharma, listen at this quote, difficult times disrupt your conventional ways of thinking and push you to forge better habits of thought, performance and being. Did you catch that? Listen at it. Difficult times disrupt 
your conventional ways of thinking and push you to forge better habits of thought, performance, and being. See, listen, 2020 didn't make us worse. 2020 made us better. We are better having gone through this. Why? Because we have to think on another level. We have to think and, and, and perform at a whole nother level. People had to stretch themselves in ways that they wouldn't have never been stretched before. That they could be more creative. That they pivot. That they do a lot of things different. But one thing about it, God is saying, because we have forged ahead, he's about to do everything he swore to do in our lives. Oh my God. You don't want to miss Sunday morning message. I'm telling you, it's going to be off the changes. I begin to declare what the Lord said to me. Amen. But right now we're trying to get this forging ahead. Let's look at some points here as we talk about forging ahead. All right. Listen at this. The first thing we want to look at as we talk about for, forging ahead is that you're going to forge ahead from 2020 to 2021 with total commitment. That's right. No more half stepping. No more half doing this and half doing that. We are going to forge ahead, ahead as the church with total commitment. We're going to give it our all. We're going to love God with all our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength. Totally committed. Total commitment. Remember, we read that scripture to you in Philippians 12. I mean, three, that the part of that verses, verses 12 through 16 in the message Bible. He says, if any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment, God will clear your blurred vision. You will see it yet. Amen. Now that we're on the right track, let's stay on it. That's that's uh, Philippians three verses 16, uh, 15 and 16 in the message Bible. So we see that it's going to take total commitment. We're going to forge ahead. Being totally committed to God. Yes, sir. For God, I live and for God, I die. Hallelujah. We're going to forge ahead. What did I say the word forge mean? We said to you that the word forge means to move ahead with increased speed and effectiveness. When you forge ahead, you continue with it and you make progress with it. Hallelujah. So we're going to go forward with what? Increase speed and effectiveness. Listen at Dana Akuri, reinventing you. She wrote uh, the seven steps to transform your body, mind, and spirit. She said, while you desire lasting change with positive results, it will take commitment from you to transform your dreams into a reality. Mm -mm -mm. See, that's why we're forging ahead with total commitment, because we know it's going to take total commitment to turn our dreams into reality. Be aware that there can be tough moments when you're ready to throw in the towel. Frustrating times when you may want to quit. When it gets rough or you hit a roadblock, you must forge ahead. And keep going. What did he say? When things get tough, you hit a roadblock, you still must forge ahead. Ah, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Think about how stupid the devil looks right now. All that stuff he did, all that acting up, all this pandemic mess, and we still are here and we are still moving forward. The church is getting stronger. The church is moving. We're progressing. We're striving and thriving. Glory. We survived so we could thrive. We ain't survived so we could lose out. We survived so we could thrive. All right, Pastor Flowers. All right, pastors are uh, Tillery Chapel in Tillery, North Carolina. Okay, this is another Pastor Flowers. All right. Bless you, great man of God. You got to be a great man of God because God allowed you to tune in tonight to hear this word about forging ahead. Amen. All right. Bless you, sir. Thank God for you. Listen, frustrating times when you may want to quit, when it's rough or you hit a roadblock, 
you must forge ahead and keep going. Despite blood, sweat, and tears, do not give up on yourself. You are worth the fight for a brighter future. Catch that. You are worth the fight for a brighter future. What is the devil fighting us about in our present? It's about our future. What is he fighting us about with some ugly in the past? It's about our future. It's a fight for the future. That's what the prophetic is all about. And we have a new book that will be coming out, amen, uh, in 2021. We wrote two. Well, we really wrote three, but two of them, we, we intentionally released them uh, this year. Death, a need to understand, and, amen, uh, running to receive the prize. Long distance runner, running to receive the prize. Again, I'll show them to you at the end of the broadcast. All right, so we're talking about total commitment. The second thing to forge ahead is it's going to take a godly attitude or a positive attitude. Do not take a negative attitude over into 2021. Do not take the spirit of pessimism, the spirit of depression over into 2021. Come on, y'all. Shake loose. Shake loose. Glory to God. Y'all know what uh what that uh uh boy uh Vicky Wine is said, shake loose. Come on, you gotta shake loose. I'm going into 2021 with a positive attitude, a godly attitude, because a godly attitude is a positive one. You cannot be negative and claim to know the Lord. When you're intimate with Him, you're gonna have a positive attitude you begin to have an attitude that other people want to be around. You're like a magnet. You draw people to you. You don't push people away with a frown, with a negative look, with a mad and an angry look. No, sir. You are smiling. You're rejoicing. You got a positive attitude. Take into 2021 as we forge ahead. Let's forge ahead with a positive attitude. Hallelujah. Let's go forward with a positive attitude. Paul was in prison and he said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Shout out to Gwen Williams, uh, Parrish Pittman and C.J. Lynch. All right. So we're going into 2021. With a positive attitude. <laughs> All right. Number three. Here's the third thing we're going to forge ahead with. Number one, total commitment. Number two, a godly attitude or positive attitude. Number three. Here we go. People skills. Come on now. God gave you in our whole year to develop our people skills. People skills. A lot of things you want to accomplish in life. And want to have in life is based on how you treat people. If you a person who's saying, I ain't studying, I ain't studying church folks. I ain't studying my past. I ain't studying. See, when you hear people talk like that, run. You know why? They don't have people skills. You got to be able to love all kinds of people. Good, bad, ugly, indifferent. Develop because all of them help develop you. God ain't going to allow you to get around always nice acting people. Some people you will have to get around and they're going to be mean so you can show them light, so you can shine and show them that you have good people skills. We must understand that there's something more precious than a car. There's something more precious than a house. There's something more precious than money. It is people because one thing about it, if you lose your house, you can always get another one or build a bigger one or make one better than the one you lost. If you lose a car, you can always get a new one. In fact, they bring it out new ones already, 2021s, a better one or a bigger one. But when a person is lost, that is something that can never be replaced. So we must understand that Jesus our ultimate example showed us how to love and get along with people. Remember, Jesus said what? Love your enemies and do good to them that despitefully use you. 
Do you know how much grace that takes to do that? You got to have good people skills. Sometimes, have you ever been to a restaurant and you see the way the waitress act that maybe she should have been in the back somewhere as a cook or something else? Why? Because she doesn't have good people skills. You never put people out front who don't have good people skills. To be an usher, you must have people skills. To be a pastor, you must have people skills. Some people say they're an apostle, but really they're not because they don't have people skills. They don't care about people as they ought. They don't know how to get along with people. They don't know how to help people. They don't know how to strengthen people. Some people say they are a pastor's wife, but really they're an awesome example of what a first lady should be because you got to love people. God is sending people. Everybody he's seeing, you have to understand, they may not like you, may not treat you right, but that ain't your problem. Your problem would be if you don't treat them right. You have to have people skills. Can I talk to somebody tonight? Going into 2021, oh, you done had nine months. This thing hit in March, amen? And you done had almost nine months of being inside of the house. And some people been inside of the house fussing and fighting. So the problem ain't everybody outside because you couldn't even get outside. You know what you want to be around now? Some people. And yet, all the time when you were around people, you kept talking about, I'm tired of people. I'm tired of putting up with people. These people make me sick. These people getting on my last nerve. So God said, look at all this complaining you're doing. Here we go now. Now you're in the house. What you got now? The TV set. You ain't around no people. You still ain't happy. What's your problem? You don't have people skills. You got 20, 20 that should have shown you how valuable people are. People. Hi, y'all shot ta ba ba. Woo! Glory to God. You say you're a prophet? Oh, I'm not just going by you. Can you prophesy? I want to see how can you get along with people. I want to see what your people skills are like, because when you mistreat people, you cut off your blessing. When you talk about people and gossip about everybody and get on Facebook and throw spears and javelin at somebody, you are showing me you are not developed in your people skills. You might can quote a scripture, but you need help with your people skills. We need to understand that if we want to get somewhere in life, we must have good people skills. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can I talk about a brag off a few people right here? Amen. I like about uh, Elder White. They used to call him Brother Smiley. Amen. And one of the reasons why Pastor Reese tell them at the door of the usher in our church is you must smile at folks. You must have people skills. And I'm telling you, he be smiling, talking to people and everything else. We laugh and grin. Why? Because it's about people. It's about people, y'all. I know there is no replacement of Van Sharp. There is never a replacement of you. So if people don't value you, oftentimes it's because they don't have good people skills. They want a car. Can't stand people. Want a house? Don't like people. Want some money? Don't like people. And God's saying, wait a minute. Y'all are following after the world. Y'all are following after the culture. I want y'all to be an example. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. By this, all men shall know that you are my disciples. Not because you got a car. Not because you got a house. Not because you got money. But because you have love one toward another. Y'all know how to treat each other. Y'all got good people skills. They don't hear y'all backbiting. They don't see y'all running down each other. Y'all got good people skills. Y'all know how to smile. Come on now. You think that lady who works at that restaurant at Olive Garden and everything else like you that much? No. She just smiling because why? She got people skills. She knows she don't smile and act like she want to get you some water and some tea and get you that napkin. You ain't going to leave her no good tip. 
You ain't going to leave her nothing. Come on, come on let's go. <laughs> Why? Because she was nasty acting. Her attitude wasn't right. Shout out to Mary Richardson. Hallelujah. And shout out to Kimwood and Tasha Aline. All right. Glory to God. You got to have good people skills. Hallelujah. And some of you, you married a witch. Some of you, you married, go to God, a, a, a monster. I know you won't out of it. I'm telling you because why? That person ain't, don't know how to treat you, don't know how to act right. Always mad, always bitter, always frustrated at you. But you die, they're going to be crying at your funeral. Woo! Come back! Oh, you go! You need to go, somebody need to go up there and slap them upside the head and say, you need to stop all that. Because while you were around them, you were always mad at them. Always frustrated, act like they were getting on your last nerve, always putting up that ugly look. Amen. Why? No people skills. People don't have people skills. And sad to say, many people are walking right out of 2020, getting ready to go into 2021 with the same old people skills. Haven't been reading the word, haven't been meditating in the word so that this natural stuff don't get on their nerves and make them mistreat people. We got to learn how to treat people right. People. It's all about people. I have no problem making friends anywhere I go because I have learned how to develop people skills. How my mother always was a person that would smile at people. Meet my mother never meet a stranger. I'm telling you, Beatrice Dickens, and some of you, 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 you come up uh, under a mean family. You came from a mean family. Your family was always fighting and fussing. You just come from a mean family. Now you got a lot of work ahead of you. Because why? You got to get rid of all of that. You got to get rid of all of that and, and, get, and, and develop people skills. Amen. You got to get that right. Cause, see, listen to me. Because, see, when folks don't like you, you cut off the favor. All right, you don't believe me? All right, here's a scripture right here. I said, yeah, I should call them out already. Uh-huh, yeah. Brother Kimwell and Tasha Lean. Amen. All right, love you. All right, listen, Luke 2, 52. You read it in your spare time. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. It said, Jesus grew in favor with God and man. He grew in favor with who? God and man. See, some people say, all I need is Jesus. All I want is Jesus. Oh, I love you, Jesus. The Bible said, how can you say you love God whom you have not seen and hate your brother or hate somebody who you see? We are made after the similitude of God. Hallelujah. It's about people, people skills. Look at that lady that dealing with her cell phone just on the news the other day. She snapping at the little boy, little boy, grabbing him, all that stuff. See, her people skills weren't right. If her people skills were right, she would have said, wow, I lost my phone. I don't know where I lost it. Did any of y'all see a phone around here? Amen. See, she wouldn't accuse nobody. She would have just asked, where's my phone? Did anybody, I, I think I lost my phone somewhere. Come to find out her phone was in the Uber. See, so she not acting like a fool about to get sued because why? She ain't got no good people skills. Oh my God. Beatrice Dickens. Amen. Listen, if we're going to come out of 2020 and go into 21 right and forge ahead, let's work on our people skills. How good are you at getting along with people? Come on now. The, the body of Christ has taken you in as a member. And here you are. Here you go. The church sit. Everybody sitting together. You go sit on the side by yourself. Come on. I'm all right. Just leave me alone. I'm all right. See, lack of people skills. <laughs> so a lot of blessings that could be on you, a lot of favor that could be demonstrated to you are never demonstrated to you because you lack people skills. Work on getting along with people. Work on working with people. Oh, my goodness. Number four, you got to give and receive good input. If you're going to forge ahead, Give some good advice and receive some good advice. I'm telling you, one of the things I know that my life is always growing about is because I get good advice. The Bible said through good advice, make war. You don't fight a battle without good advice. And see, you give good advice and then you receive good advice. I'm telling you, a lot of you, you're blessed because you're around people that got good advice. 
And it's through good advice, through good input that your life begins to soar, that your life begins to take off, that you begin to go to another level because you're giving good input and you're receiving good input. Hallelujah. You want going out of 2020 into 2021. You want bright minds, brilliant minds around you. Don't let them intimidate you. Don't let them throw you off course. You need that. You want that. You crave for that. You pray for that. God, allow me today not to run into fools, but run into people who want good advice and people who are giving me good advice. Help me, Lord, to run into people that got some good input and are, and are ready to receive good input. Hallelujah. Shout out to Tiambra, uh, Amir. Amen. Amir. All right. All right, Tiambra. All right. Amen. And Marilyn Smith. Shout out to Marilyn Smith. All right. Hallelujah. Boy, this is good. Is this helping anybody? If it's helping, you put down and say, it's helping me, Bishop. Yeah, you need to give and receive good input. Hallelujah. See, Absalom, amen, he followed bad advice. In fact, he was given bad advice, telling people, hey, forget about David. He's too busy and deceive the people, end up hanging himself. Amen. Hallelujah. David was a prophet, but he, he had Nathan around him, another prophet. He had other people around him that could give him good advice. Even he took the good advice from Abigail. Abigail became his wife because why? She gave him good counsel. She gave him good input. Thank God for women that know how to give us good input. Thank God for Pastor Reese Sharp that gives me good input. She knows how to give me good input. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. Hit that like button, that share button. Hit that subscribe button. Enjoy this word. And don't you dare go nowhere. Amen. You can't go nowhere. Amen. Anyway, the pandemic is on. All right. Number five. Here goes number five. How you do to forge your head. Here's number five. Chase divine opportunities. What did I say? Chase divine opportunities. As we come out of 2020, going into 2021, God has already promised us some divine opportunities. He's already, glory to God, surrounded this upcoming year with his favor. He's already crowned this year with his goodness. So we need to expect divine opportunities. It's been said, looking back gives you regrets. Looking ahead gives you opportunities. What did I just say? Looking back gives you regret. Looking ahead gives you opportunities. I prophesied it over somebody's life tonight that you're about ready to meet with some divine opportunities. Some divine opportunities are already scheduled for you in 2021. They're already a part of your destiny. Ruth Ruth connected with Naomi, went back from Moab to Bethlehem, Judah, went down there in Bethlehem, Judah and met with a divine opportunity. Glory to God. She connected with Boaz, a kinsman redeemer, and her life shifted. And out of that relationship came Obed. Out of that came Jesse. And out of that came David. What an opportunity she got involved with. And I'm here to tell you, if God done it for Ruth, he's going to do it for you and I. We are going to meet some strategic divine opportunities. Let's embrace them. Let's chase them. Let's get up with the understanding that, hey, I'm expecting some opportunities. Amen. That leads me to number six. Number six, obedience and endurance. That's right. In order to forge ahead, you have to understand if we be willing and obedient, we're going to eat the good of the land. We have to believe that what the Bible said in the book of Job, if we obey and serve him, we'll spend our years, amen, and our days in pleasure and plenty. Let's obey God. 
we ought to obey God rather than carnal, natural man who is trying to tell us don't preach or teach in the name of Jesus no more. We're going to keep preaching this gospel, teaching this gospel, and being obedient to God. We're going to keep living for God. We're going to keep tithing. Come on now. You got to be a tither. Come on, saints. Let's tithe. Let's give. Let's obey God. God ain't told you to stop tithing because there's a pandemic. God ain't told you to stop tithing because things look rough. That's the time to tithe and trust God. Shout out to Pastor Jeanette Ingram. Come on, keep forging ahead, forging ahead. All right, shout out to Gary Brown tonight. All right, we're forging ahead with obedience and what else? Endurance, endurance. That's right. People are always saying how much faith they got. But the Bible said they didn't inherit the promises just because of faith. They inherit the promises by faith and patience. That's steadfast endurance. One of the things that this 2020 should have shown you is that you have the power to endure. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And you and I, we've endured till we're about ready to see morning come forth. You and I have to forge ahead through obedience and endurance. Endurance, steadfast endurance. Hallelujah. Have you seen the patience of Job, the endurance that he had? That man endured sickness. That man endured, glory to God, fire coming down from uh, heaven. The devil was sitting, all kinds of stuff trying to wipe that man out. He endured his wife saying, curse God and die. He came out on the other side and God gave him double for his trouble. God gave him twice as much because after he had patiently endured, he got the promise. You get the promise after you endure. What have you endured this past year? If you've endured suffering, you've endured pain, get ready. 2021 is getting ready to show up and show out for you because you've been obedient and you endured. And my last thing about forging ahead tonight, whoo, glory to God, these seven things. The last thing is praise and expectation. If you're going to forge ahead, out of 2020 into 2021, you must go into this season with praise. <laughs> Glory to God. Enter into this season with praise. Don't you dare not praise the Lord at 12 o'clock. When 12 o'clock strikes, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Give him the praise. Give him the praise that he kept you alive. Give him the praise that he didn't let you die. Give him the praise that he kept your family. Give him the praise that he allowed you to see another year. Give him the praise that he did not allow you to get killed at the mall, that he did not allow you to die, but he had kept you alive, brought you into the kingdom for such a time as this. Praise him and watch this and move in expectation. Expect the best. Expect the great. Don't look for nothing less than the best to happen in your life in 2020. I told you, it's still your more season. Look for more. Expect more. Expect God to pay off bills. Expect God to get you out of debt. Expect God to pay off that car. Expect God to cause you to have so much in one bank account, you got to start another bank account. Expect God. He said he will bless your storehouses. He didn't just say storehouse. He said storehouses. So there's going to be more, hallelujah, coming your way. So you got to get one at PNC. You got to get another one at another bank and another bank because God wants you to have high expectations. When you expect God to do it, he can do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Ephesians 3 and 20 tells us that. So let's forge ahead. That's what we're talking about tonight. We're going to forge ahead. We're going to move with speed and we're going to move with effectiveness. We understand that the heat of 2020 and the stuff that hit us in 2020 did not break us, did not shake us. It gave us a greater determination to forge ahead. Shout out to Pastor Jeanette 
Ingram again and Gary Brown. Amen. We appreciate y'all watching tonight. <laughs> woo! We woo! We're gonna bring you in 2020. I hope y'all got blessed tonight. My soul was blessed as I shared this word with y'all tonight, talking about forging ahead, coming out of 2020, going into 21, expecting an accelerated pace, expecting God to do great things. Don't you dare miss 20, uh, 21, our first Sunday's message. I'm going to give you some prophetic things that God gave me, amen, as we talk about, amen, a message that God, y'all know, amen, I always give a message that, as some scriptures, and I'm going to give you that script, some scriptures that I want you to stand on this whole year. Last year, God told us to stand on Psalm 115 in 2020. We stood on 115 verses 14 and 15 that says the Lord shall increase you more and more. You and your children, ye are blessed of the Lord. God gave me that. And boy, was it accurate. Amen. Boy, we have seen God increase us more and more and more and more and more. We are blessed of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. That's who we are. And God has given us a word. Amen. That we're going to share with you Sunday morning at 1015. It's going to be off the chain. And every member of Newness of Life Christian Center and those of you that really want to know what God is saying. Amen. I'm not talking about making up stuff on God. Amen. I'm talking about hearing from God. I've heard from God. If God didn't say it, I wouldn't speak it. I'm telling you, I'm going to give you something to stand this whole year with and fight every devil with. Amen. It's going to be powerful Sunday morning at 1015. But tonight, as we come out of 2020, going into 2021, God said, you tell them to forge ahead. Tell them to forge ahead. Haya shata. Tell them to forge ahead. Hallelujah. Don't look back. Don't look back. We're not going back. Not looking back with regrets. But we are going ahead. Looking forward to these opportunities. These seven things. Seven things. One, forge ahead with total commitment. Two, forge ahead with a godly attitude or positive attitude. Number three, forge ahead with people skills. Number four, Forge ahead by giving and receiving good input. Number five, forge ahead by chasing divine opportunities. Number six, forge ahead by obedience and endurance. And number seven, forge ahead with praise. Hallelujah. Let everything that have breath praise you, the Lord. Forge ahead with praise and expectation. Let's expect God to do something in 2021. Expect God. To take us higher, expect God to explode in our lives in 2021. I'm telling you, glory to God. Hallelujah. We're looking forward to it. Hallelujah. Thank God for all of you. Hallelujah. Well, let me tell you something. There are several ways you can give and be a blessing to our ministry, and we want to tell you about them. The first way you can give and be a blessing to Newness of Life Christian Center is by writing us. That's right. You can write us. Send that check or money order to Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina, zip code 27886. How did I tell you to do it? You send that check or money order to Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina. The zip code is 27886. I'm telling you, we have great workers at our local church, some hard workers. Pastor Reese is one of the hardest working women in all the land. I thank God for her. Amen. We have great financial people, elders. Amen. And, and all, just everybody, just wonderful. Amen. Hallelujah. And I love people. Amen. And uh, the other thing is the way you can give is by downloading the Give Plus Church app. Download that Give uh, Plus Church app. Download it. That's right. And type in Newness of Life Christian Center. When you type in Newness of Life Christian Center, you can give that way. Or you can type in 27886 and Newness of Life Christian Center is going to pop up. And you can give something to the kingdom of God. Because when you give to God, 
you will not go broke. I'm telling you, when you give and bring your tithes and offering to the storehouse and be a blessing to ministry, I'm talking about real, genuine ministry. God will not let you go down. Hey, hallelujah. We have we have uh, 1.4 acres of land that we pay for. We have 11 acres on Main Street that we've already paid for. Amen. We on television. We on radio. And we start out every year not owing a TV station or a radio station anything. As we start out 2021, we don't owe any television station anything. We don't owe any radio station anything. And we own several. But all of those bills have been taken care of as we come out of 2020 going into 2021. Now, what am I saying to you? You getting ready to pay off all your debts as well. Yes. That's what I'm saying to you, sir. That's what I'm saying to you, ma'am, because you are part of the family of God and you are part of Abraham's seed. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and you are heirs according to the promise. And God brought Abraham to a wealthy place where the man was rich in silver, rich in cattle. The man was rich. Amen. And he promised to do that for us as well. In blessings, he's going to bless us. In multiplying, he's going to multiply us. Hallelujah. Don't forget, you can go back and hear the budgeting teaching. Pastor Reese, come on, start your new year off right. Pastor Reese taught right here on Facebook Live some teaching about budgeting your money. And she did three messages that were powerful. We also did messages and teaching on budgeting your money before she did it. And then she came and put the icing on the cake. I helped bake the cake, but she put the icing on the cake. And so if you go back and hear that, hear those teaching about budgeting your money for your more season, it will bless your life. Because it got, she gave you uh, examples of how to do it. And believe me, she knows how to do it. Amen. She knows how to make it work. Amen. Our cars and stuff are paid for. Amen. We, we don't owe no man nothing but to love him. Amen. And we love people again. Uh, so if you would like to be a blessing to my wife and I, here's how you can do that. Here's how you can do it. Go and to your cash app. When you go to your cash app, hit that dollar sign, hit the letter R and then type in the word determine D E T E R M I N E D. Go to your cash app, hit that dollar sign and then type in the letter R and then type in the word determined, D-E-T-E-R-M-I-N-E-D. Hallelujah. Woo. It's going to be exciting, y'all. We are coming out of our more season going into 2021, forging ahead. And God has a word. Man, I'm almost want to tell you what this word is on Sunday morning. Amen. To set the stage for you. For your whole 2021. But you better tune in. You don't want to miss what God has said. I'm not talking about what I said. It's never Listen. Remember what I said? 2020 would be your year or more. Think about it. Even when it comes to these stimulus tech checks. The president trying to get what? More to us. More. Trying to get, get more. And, and believe me. God got more. He got more than $600 for y'all. Yes. Oh, Lord. Oh, shout out to uh, the J. Oh, that's a pretty name. Uh, they J, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Broadway. All right. And Cynthia Wilkins and Priscilla Ann. Shout out to all of you. Amen. Let's forge ahead, y'all. Let's forge ahead, newness of life. Let's forge ahead. Amen. Let's come out of 2020, going into 2021, saying nothing is going to stop me. I'm going to get what God promised me and I'm going to help my brother and my sister get what God has promised them. You don't just want to get what God promised you. Let's help somebody else get what God has promised them. All right. Amen. Again, before we close tonight, I'm going to show you our two latest books. My wife's going to get those to me real quick. Uh, again, we, we have enjoyed sharing this message with you. Amen. Forging ahead. Come on, let's go forward. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my wife wrote a song about forward. Yeah. We're moving forward. Amen. And uh, hopefully that'll be out on a brand new suit, uh, CD. After a while, we have a CD out called Determine. And uh, it's a wonderful CD. I may close out with the song, Not Unto Us. I don't know what I might. 
All right, we want to close out with that. Okay, good. Amen. But anyway, these are our latest two books, Pastor Flowers. You need these. Amen. One is called Death, A Need to Understand. Well, first we wrote this one at the beginning of, of uh, 2020. It's called Long Distance Runner, Running to Receive the Prize. We talk about running with right connections. We talk about uh, running with a renewed mind. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we talked about uh, running uh, with a renewed mind, running with uh, uh, your business is God's business. Uh, in this book, we talk about uh, what else? What did we talk about? Running to win. And here's a section I love called running with a thick skin. Yeah, you got to have thick skin when you're doing this stuff. Running with purpose, drive and passion. Running with mercy. Running with love. Uh, the kinds of people that we want to run with or connect with. All of that is in this book. This book is about 130 pages of writing called Long Distance Running, Running to Receive the Prize. It can be yours for $12.95. Amen. And then we have a book called Death, A Need to Understand. Both of these two books, we wrote them and finished them, but the publisher, publisher got them out to us right before the pandemic hit. So God was speaking prophetically. Amen. Because I'm telling you, people need to understand death. Death is an enemy. That's why we cry at funerals. That's why we cry when we lose a loved one called death is an enemy. It's the last enemy that shall be destroyed. And so we teach in this, amen, about uh, so many good subjects. And it's only five dollars, but it's a good five dollar book. We've had pastors to say, man, this book should have been written. Amen. But I thank God that God allowed me to write it. They said, man, somebody should have been written, written a book like this. But I'm telling you, it's a good book. Where did death come from? Where do we go when we die? All this good stuff. Uh, God is good. A section here called God is good. Amen. See, a lot of people think God killing their mama, their daddy. God took, God did not take your mama from you, your daddy from you, your brother from you, your sister. God is not doing that. Every time when God took somebody in the Bible, he took them alive. He took Enoch. He took Elijah. They were alive. God took them. Amen. So death is just here because just like your natural body is temporal, it is not eternal and it will perish. It goes back to the dust from whence it came. All that good teaching in here. Amen. Anyway, amen. You can get these two books for about $18 together. Amen. $4 extra that we got to ship them out to you. But uh, you can cash app us at that cash, hit that cash app, that dollar sign, the aura, and determine and specify that e they are for the books, the money, $22 for the books, and then send your address, and I guarantee you, I will ship these out to you. Amen. It's $4 and something cent for packaging and handling. That's why we say total $22. But we'll get these right out to you. We sent them out to so many pastors and leaders that wanted them for their own selves and for their members. So get these two books, Long Distance Runner, Running to Receive the Prize, and Death, A Need to Understand. Well, I got to get ready to go. Yeah, okay. Let me give you, okay, the cash app again is the dollar sign, the letter R, and the word determined, D-E-T-E-R-M-I-N-E-D. -E -E the dollar sign, the letter R, and the word determined, D-E-T-E-R-M-I-N-E-D, -E -E and specify that this that you're sending is for the books. If not, you just cash up and something over to be a blessing to my wife and I. We'll receive that and we'll thank you for that. And, and we'll pray for you that God will supply your need according to his riches and glory. God will multiply what you give to us because it's his will that you do that. All right. Because the Bible said, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teach it in all good things. Another translation said, let him that's being taught give to that pastors or that leaders financial support. So amen is part of God's way of doing it. We sown to you spiritual, you sow to us naturally. All right. <laughs> <laughs> amen. Time to make a joyful noise. 
2020 going out and 2021 is coming in. All right. Hallelujah. Happy New Year to you all. Happy New Year. Pastor Reese and I say Happy New Year to all of you. Newness of life. Happy New Year. We're going off with not unto us. That's our song. Hallelujah. Yeah, I want to get that. I don't have it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here it is. Determine. Woo! This is a good song called Not Unto Us. Taken from Psalms 115. That said, the first verse said, Not unto us, but unto your name we give glory. Pastor Reese wrote all these wonderful songs. You can get this CD. It's only $15. And there are 12 other songs up here that are real good. Happy New Year! Woo! Ah! Ah! I need to put my hat on. <laughs> Woo! Happy New Year! Happy 2021. <laughs> Not unto us. Don't forget, Sunday morning, 1015. Come on, News of Life. I want you to get on that phone. I want you to make sure every member is listening. It's important that we hear this word so we'll be on the same page for this whole year. Let's hear what the Spirit is saying to us in 2021. We're going to share it with you Sunday morning. Forge your head, forge your head, forge your head. <laughs>